of course we all know we are rife with a uh, high spate of insecurity across the country and at this time everybody is implored to see something say something you know individuals bodies associations and all that so uh, right now we want to examine the role of the media in intelligence gathering and security also um, to promote it positively uh, what are they doing effectively what is it that they are not seemingly doing uh, to talk about this i have with me the president of the association of online media practitioners and also the welfare uh, officer of that association the president is uh, Uki Osamson. Yeah. Good morning and yeah. welcome. Yeah, good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Temidayo Anthony. She is the welfare officer of the station. So, uh, we are talking about the role of the media in intelligence gathering yeah. and security, which is also to help, you know, uh, our, uh, our, our personnel, you know, security personnel and forces. And, and so, uh, most times people complain that the media, especially mainstream media, and these days uh, online media, come out with a lot of sensational stories, stories. that can be uh, actually misdirected when it comes to that. So what is uh, the role you are playing as a president of online media practitioners here in Nigeria? Yeah, uh, thank you once again, uh, yeah, Jennifer. It's good to be here again this morning. Um, and thank you to uh, Superscreen for the great work and you guys are doing. Um, you t find you, you started and um, said that the country is in a big challenge of insecurity and all that. And um, uh, like what is saying, uh, like um, this is our country. Um, and uh, we must acknowledge at this time that whatever the country is going through is a result of everybody, you know, one way or other, you and I and other persons who are involved, the security agency, that contributed to it one way or the other. And that is as regards intelligent gathering. Yeah. You started, I like what you said earlier, you talked talk about um, say something, say something. A lot of time, the security agency that amount they are started with the responsibility of protecting uh, lives, um, our environment, properties, and all that. These guys are human beings. And I'm sure, the, in fact, somebody said this morning that uh, yes, um, we have about 500,000 uh, police officers guiding a, popul a population of about 200, you know, um, uh, um, uh, for that of Nigeria and their capacity and, um, numbers. But really, that is not enough in terms of manpower uh, personnel. So they need the citizen, the community persons, the traditional leaders, the church, uh, clergy, uh, you know, spiritual leaders and, um, you know, personnel, media yeah. to support them in the fight against insecurity, especially mm -hmm. now that it's really high. So what, like uh, you mentioned, the sh the, um, uh, what's the role of the media? Exactly. Um, the media one, of course, we are meant to pass out uh, information to the public line, like uh, you know that it's whatever the society is today, it is as a result of the way the media has actually shaped it. So enough of destroying our country with our own entrances, mm -hmm. especially the media, exactly. you know, narrative you're you know you're turning out story um, even though if you're hungry over an issue or an experience with an officer i'm not sure that that officer is just one person out of the force or out of the army or out of that agency so i'm not sure every officer because there are some officers that are very, will not uh, uh, have that nature of being neutralized you know like neutralizing. so yeah. we should not condemn the whole institution because of one character so Today we see people, once you are angered, the next thing is you are doing a sensation. And therefore, us, the way we are trained as journalists is that when you're writing your report or your news, you don't bring yourself into that story. So media should understand that they are the one guiding, shaping, and you know, projecting that smaller society or that country. So once we are losing guide and we are, we are, we are churning out story that is not meant to come out, you should guide what comes out. Even when, I mean, and that's why the mainstream media, I mean, you know, in, in, before the advent of social media or online or, or, um, platforms or something, you know, as a media practitioner, one story comes, as a journalist, as a reporter, once I do a story, I will have to send that story to my editor 
in the office. The editor will go to invert it before we send it to another senior editor again, before we send it to the uh, maybe the, 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 uh, the group editor, before it ends up on the, you know, the daily editor. Mm -hmm. So we'll be caused to guide against, you know, sensational. You know, sensational story. You don't bring yeah. yourself to that home or something that you are not sure of. Mm -hmm. But today, so many things has happened because of the advent of social media. Fine, the digital age is good. It's very good with the 21st century. But at the same time, we can say check what comes out. And, and the populists and the citizens also need to also check what they receive. Mm. A lot of the time, we just release stories, uh, pictures or videos online. People just start sharing and they tell you this is what happening in a uh, social place. And when this is a video of an incident that have occurred maybe like 10 years ago and not even in this country. Mm. Maybe somewhere in one African country, but they bring it back and they start sharing it under I mean, some few hours. You see that it's very right away mm -hmm. and claiming this is happening. And anyway, it's not really the issue. Okay, now, um, as a president, as a president of uh, online media practitioners, uh, you have several people, especially in some social media spaces, who claim that intelligence. Uh, news that is uh, the genre of that kind of work now how uh, most of these people do you actually verify them they claim to be journalists do you actually have a physical link to identify most of these people who claim they are based in Nigeria they get their sources of news locally and all that so how do you do this vetting on your path to put some sanity on those social media. Okay, yeah, so that's the essence of the association. The, uh, that's the National Association of Online Security News Publishers, NASPI. Um, one thing, because of this same experience we've seen in the past, uh, I mean, I can remember far back in 2020, uh, I, we, some guys came around, you know, us, and before you know it, because this guy referred to him was a journalist, and, and because he was, he's a journalist, you know, you, you want to interact and oh Definitely. colleague, these are colleagues and you don't bother to you know, but later on we'll find out that no, this is not the person this person is being identified. In fact they don't have that background of journalists. You know, they're just they are just doing because of the online um, uh, you know platform now you to phone, your mobile phone now, a smartphone, you can become a yeah, you can become a, a online investigator. You know, yes, journalist. just posting and all that. But that's but the, the background is not there. And none of them have actually, some of those guys didn't pass through. At least, even though they have, the online is just coming out, I mean, you know, but that means you must have had experience probably working in a TV station, you must have had experience working in a radio station, have experience working in uh, probably a media, uh, print, a media uh, newspaper company, company yeah. you know, so, and then maybe now you are now on your own. Fine. I mean, a lot of platforms are running their independent media online publication and they are, they are serious minded people doing it the way it's supposed to be done. But like I said, these guys came out. We find out. So we have to allow. We have to. We have to like, you know, cut them off from us. Yes, like, you you, you uh, issue some sanctions. Yes, like de definitely. Stuff. We have okay. to cut them away. So talking about um, for us, I met a, um, an inspector general. Uh, sorry, an assistant inspector general of police AIG, and we just started. And he's talking about we're talking about these online uh, news publishers and online practitioners and all that. He said when he hear online, he, his mindset is only like. People that are not visible because you just see some people, just see some people posting stories, and you cannot really trace them to an address. Because say, are you sure these guys? When do you guys have an address to you? You know, like, see, ah, online. So I, I was able to establish that. Oh, sir, for online partition, and this is especially for us now. Anybody that belongs to that group, uh, that's uh, that's for us now. You must, you must of course know you, the person. Yeah, so you're not operating from one bedroom or one, uh, you know. Uh, sky, I will can't see you. So we need to meet with you first. You need to have an identity to you. Two is that you must have passed through a media organization. You must have passed through a media organization that can identify. It not me that identify with you. Somebody should be able to say, "Oh, this is I know this person. I'm out. They should be at least we should see your byline. Or oh, you are in this newspaper. These are your story you have done in the past. Or you are um, a, a, a broadcaster. You must have when I see those people. So you you must be identified one way or that. So and so there are rules and regulations. And you also be screened. So for us as an station, we have um, um, a kind of um, a screening um, um, okay. personnel that also before I'm the president. But I don't admit people easily. Okay, I don't admit so I own. believe my next question would be better directed to Timidayo as okay. a welfare officer of that association. How do you go about with, uh, you know, handpicking, screening, and making sure 
that uh, the people who are out there putting up information at least have some kind of reputation and a face at least for you to identify with them. All right, so just like um, Shanti said, or our president, the people who respect, mm -hmm. the president of the association said, you have to be an individual that has an identity. Okay, for me, being a welfare officer of the association, I'm a presenter on Top Radio 9.9. I present a security program called Security 247 on Monday. So I have an identity. I have something you can connect me with. And so with every other individual, like you said, you just don't become faceless or just want to identify with the organization because you think it's thriving or you're just moving out there, they're going out there, they're getting known because we're yeah. just getting started. Okay. We're not known, so known yet, but we're coming big and we're connecting to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, some people want to connect with what is happening, what is trending, what is coming big. But we need to identify you. And like you said, you have to belong to a to media house. We need to see what you've done. We need to be able to identify. We need to have a visible identity. And when you post stories, it has to be verified. You post it on the group. We have to confirm your source. You have to be ensure that what you put out there is not just some fallacy put together because the reputation of the association is also online. So that's part of my own job responsibility apart from providing other when it comes to food and all that. <laughs> when it comes to food and all that, but mm. we need to ensure that we, we have verifiable people in our organization, not just some people who would diminish the identity of the organization we're trying to put out there, connect to the right people. And of course, when we talk about security, you know, security is a major thing going on in the country right now. I don't want to joke with any information that will bring about turmoil in the environment, in the state, and of course in the nation at large. So we verify everything that comes. We pass it on to our president, like you said, and of course we ensure who your editors are, who edited, who are your sources, where did you get your information before putting it out there, because the name of our station is also at stake. All right, wonderful. All right, back to Samson. Uh, I want to ask at this time, uh, we have had spades of our kidnappings, abductions, uh, some are very, uh, you know, known, blown up cases. Yeah. Now, what is the role of your association? Because uh, sometimes what goes on when you go through things like um, tweets or other things on social media, what a lot of Nigerians ask is those uh, people who abduct, kidnap and bandits and people into other nefarious activities, they have a base. They have a source. They post videos, they do things, send audio messages. Right. Now, how have you, as president or the association generally, okay. worked with security agencies to identify at least where do we, you know, get these people from? How do we get across to these people? Because they're not ghosts. Okay. They send these things through sources that have their own IP address and yes, other traceable things. They communicate with phones, they have got SIMs, they've got NINs that are registered to those things. So how have you, in your uh, position, affected with security forces to probably fish out one or two of those unscrupulous? Okay, yeah, so the great one. Um, I remember at uh, far back, um, um, flight back to the COVID-19 uh, uh, time, and um, you find that even the maybe close to the early last year or something. Remember that in Kaduna Patlali, the Kaduna government talked about the fact that uh, the Kaduna and um, uh, Zanfra, Zanfra all state, you know, that um, these guys, you know, communicate the, the terrorists, the bandits, and, you know, uh, uh, the, the likes, uses, take advantage of communication. But most times, the community, of course, like we all say, this is, Everybody was supposed to And job. most times, the, the security agencies are mounted in parallel environments, even when those things are going to carry. But most times, when these guys are moving, all those terrorists, you know, is that it is even community persons that even tell them, oh, the military are here, don't pass through this place. So there's always this communication. And that's why finally you find out how come this thing got to end, you know, eventually happened. So it's most times, the community guys are the one thing. and so they just and the debate is give the community person and because of that especially those areas where these things are happening they're not easy and all that you know that the level of poverty is really high in that area so most of what they do is this bit they come to you give you a, um, a token 
I'll give you a small food and and you you are you are happy. The next thing, come tomorrow. I'll need you. I'll call you. No, communicating their language. That's so so so. And the, when these guys are coming, somebody is always a smaller. When the ministry are coming, they'll tell you don't pass this here. Yeah. And so there's that in that, there's yeah. always and so it so that's why the government there said oh they should um, put a, a a ban on the um, uh, network them for their um, um, uh, so yes yeah, communication and, uh, for some even when everybody were eating on the governor and all that because he knows that the way this communication is going if this thing can be done that way it will probably reduce their communication network and then the military can always take advantage of that um, because of course they are always they are pushing they are going into those hideouts trying to get you know closer to there but most of the they get there somebody will have passed information and the military they they, they terrorist leave so each time that when that issue occurred, we as an association, we commanded the governor. In fact, we, I remember we, we raised an issue on uh, Cardona governor because it's an effort. Even though people, a lot of people said they can't really communicate with their business because if you are banned, uh, stopped uh, communication and your targets are, but what about the other oh, citizen? But, uh, yeah. What about other business uh, 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 that yeah, we yeah, need to yeah, go yeah. on? But the truth is, we have to also, also sacrifice to really tackle this whole issue. But the truth is, the matter is like, a lot of this issue is, and that's why we're saying intelligent gathering. You know, a lot of this thing is still the fact that a lot of people are aiding these guys. So, and they are not ghosts, like you said, but few people are the one killing and destroying this effort by the military. And just look at the, the last few weeks, see how the military is going, eating oh, and eating and all, eating yeah. and. So, once those guys are being picked, you know, those one giving that information are being picked and out of it. Okay, recently the police, um, um, the, uh, the police sent. Um, no, no, I mean, sorry, the military that defense got sent a story out, and it was even a woman, a, a Juma covered and all that, so much carrying food to the terrorists, you know, supplying, you know, so just to make so, and this is a community person. So you can see that so the, the, the fight against um, insecurity really have to really be everybody control, and on if, on, 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 until we understand that fact that this thing is everybody's control, effort and not. To destroy the effort by our military, the, the ministry are doing so much. They are doing so much, and these are some of the people that have been rated as one of the best in us outside this country. Mm -hmm. But they, we look at how this thing has been going on for years, and lives, innocent lives are being killed every day. And even military persons are not being killed; are being killed because somebody are aiding this effort. So the point is like we as an association, each time we see some of this effort gets stopped by the government or by security. That is commendable. We always, we, 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 what we do, we, really, we, we do what we call uh, press releases. We, we, we release, I was saying release most time. Even first January of the first year of this year, we did, and if there's, if there's a need for us to um, um, uh, challenge the government or say, come, we are not doing this right, we'll challenge you. Okay. When the issue of kidnapping of those school students in, you know, in the, um, Kad the same Kaduna to happen, we, we went out on the governor, Erufai, because we cannot, you cannot sit down and you have to take an action. And I think that's one of the reason why he took the action of, you know, let them ban those, um, you know, for a time, place a suspension on the um, um, network um, communication. Okay. So, really, so for us, our own is we are watchdog. If there's if once we see that your actions are going the right way, we'll commend, we'll release it. Even though we don't need to come and meet you, all we do is just release and commend the effort of the governor or the military agency. Mm -hmm. And if, okay, look at the case of. Um, uh, these security agencies, when they are complaining of bad days, look at the answers, you know, all these bad days. We went on the, we went out and released a statement and said, come, you must do what they call um, um, name and shame. We told all the security agency, and we saw at the time that even, the, now the police is doing it. Yeah, regularly. They are picking those guys. And what that does to this uh, system or to the institution of the police, is like, everybody sit back and, and behave themselves. I saw one video somewhere, one officer was trying to enter out, and the man was saying, Oga, please, I'm not searching your phone. You know, because he knows that if he goes be beyond, you know, yeah. and the point is that you don't need to search their phone. You can do your job, do your this thing. Mm -hmm. So once the badges are misbehaving and you are taking them out and naming them and shaming them, immediately the whole thing will get other. Right. So I think it's coming down. We we commending them. So really, for us, we are watching as an association. If you are doing it well as a security agency. You are doing the right part. We will commend you. Right. But most times, like I said, the whole effort of the military. Uh, the defense and the security, other security agency police, is still being, you know, we're not seeing, we're not seeing the best of, like we said, but because, you know, sometimes when they are making their efforts and progressing, a, 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 a spoiler 
is and that specific light is just within the community and all it's right. not so okay uh, great insights that all right samson uh that is another issue which is uh largely on the part of people who we know security doesn't just have to do with you know uh physical harm it could also be you know um libelous or slanderous, slanderous. things on people's uh, uh reputations business. yes Right now, we are in our in peak uh, election, season uh, for the elections, uh, elections, general elections, and in some places, gubernatorial elections. Now, some so-called known investigative journalists who do their trade mm -hmm. online, uh, they have taken to casting aspersions on a lot of people who are coming out, you know, maybe for presidency or different positions. Uh, different positions. There's always a back and forth between those people, supporters of, you know, Different members of that groups. party and all yeah. that. So how do you get to uh, put a leash, in quotes, on some of these investigative journalists for those who are under your association? Oh, uh, well, you, I mean, beyond our association, generally, I think we need to talk to ourselves Especially like you said, this period is a very, very sensitive period. Yes. Uh, election area is always, you, you see a lot of panicking, mm -hmm. tension, you know, hitting all the policy. But it, like the truth is, our media, should, I want to use this opportunity to also talk, like I said, beyond our association, to talk to media practitioners generally. We don't need to heat up the policy mm -hmm. because election is coming. Election will just come and go. Look at 2019. In fact, no, 20 was probably made better. Look at 2015. I remember very, very, very. My former then I use I wasn't using this way I use as an office now. My former office then. When it gets to that election, I'm sure we all had the experience. There was this tension that no if I, Lagos then, Lagos, not even the national Lagos election then, because there's this tension that we don't know what's gonna happen the next day. There will be bloodshed or something. In fact, I will have to sleep in the office that day. And we saw people going to the market. My office then is closer to the a, a big market then, like you know. And we saw people going to the market in that afternoon. And doing this, you know, last minute buying, so that even if anything will happen, everyone can be in their house and be yeah, eating it's a thing, yeah. just to survive. Mm -hmm. But it's not shooting so. We don't hit the public. And the twenty, the twenty fifteen, and now the social media is not the same with that time. It's really high now. Mm -hmm. The use of social media is really high now. So I want to call on all media practitioners. Like I said, this is our country force. And like a minister said yesterday, a minister said yesterday, we don't have to derope our country because we want to win an election mm. you can win an election in fact you and your supporter you and your media uh, jobbers yeah. working for you you can win your election either governor either senator either minister um, uh, as of rep either president either even a local government chairman you can win that election without deroping that, that office yeah. or that your country or that constituency you don't have to you don't have to tell me this woman is not did until I, I i see why i should not vote for her <laughs> In fact, the best thing, like uh, people always and they generally, if you don't perform, if you don't perform, what we are waiting for, the public, the populace knows knows that you are not performing. So it is election, ele your casting of your vote that should do the judgment for you. If you don't work as a president or as a governor, you want to uh, get a second time election uh, vote or something, you want to come in. If you have not done anything and you have you have gotten a mandate in the first time and you're coming this time, and you're not done, you should know that naturally people will work against you. So, but this day that you're seeing different political you see um, political politicians, and politicians are smart. They come and, and engage you, mm -hmm. and after they finish, they, they dump you. Sure. They just want to, and, but you will have the stress moment. And look at this funny thing, and we've been seeing this happen recently, even pictures. Politicians, that will, you, you are the one that is casting spells on, you know, on everybody. But this same politician, the next week or the, after the election, you see them coming, coming to work themselves. You see them having meetings in their house. You see, a, you know, a one person going to one supposed enemy. And it's the media that will have projected that person like the worst enemy that cannot meet. These guys are, that's one enemy. These are, these are, these. but meanwhile, when you see the same people, sometimes we see some picture we sent, some picture we saw recently about some as a candidate now. We're surprised because in this space, they made this person that this man cannot meet this man in his lifetime again. Yeah. This is this, Media enmity kind of a picture you have painted, but the man is hugging the man, is the woman owing by the hand, and they are going into their private room to have a private discussion and to work for themselves to support themselves. But you must have destroyed, in fact, the standards that some people have been kid doing that ele election. Yeah. I remember the local government election in Lagos, some person were kid in Sulere, 
People were killed, and those people now, their family are not being compensated because of tension in that community. Some people were killed, not the politician, not the candidate, not the family of those people, mm -hmm. but innocent people were killed because of the tension you play. So the media shaped the society. So we should not, and there's one thing called these days now, you, let's go into, we are talking about the um, online. There's what I call digital footprints. There's what I call digital footprints. Whatever you do now, now, we'll come back to speak in, you know, maybe the next 10 years or in the next five years. Whatever you do now. So you should be careful as media people, as regard what you write, what to post now. Because in the next few years, those things will come back to you. God is a footprint in yeah, other place. Never, so and never, the internet I, I never forgets. Ship, All right, I, I, I want to pin a little bit into that and say that personal interest and then the image that you represent as a media should come into place as it is. Because, like you said, the politicians want to use some people who they know they have enough followers to project their mind. But you, as a media practitioner, you, as a representative of that media house or that. That particular body you represent what do you believe you're putting out there because a lot of people believe um let's say this major media presenter or this oap or this journalist whatever he says is right yeah and that's why what you put out as a media person can actually make or mar the society especially now that we are in the election pre-election year where so much is happening mm. like i said people cast as passions oh this person is this this person is that and they believe because it's coming from Jennifer. So <laughs> Jennifer it, it, says she's an authority. She's an authority. She's an authority, she's an authority. That's right. she's an authority in our field. So we need to know that we have the power, we have the tool to actually make mark the society, bring in peace or bring in turmoil. How you use it will tell after the elections. All right. Okay. So uh, now to the major gist of it. Uh, your association, like you've mentioned, I believe it's a credible uh, space no. and uh, it uh, has its ways of rewarding excellence. So right. That will take me back to Temidayo. You have uh, an event coming up on the 21st of September. So can you tell us more about it and what it entails and what will come out of it? All right, so our event is coming up on the 21st of uh, September 2022, as it says and it's the, the conference for the association and we're bringing in together different bodies when it comes to security because we are a security association we're bringing in the military the paramilitary the per politi uh, the politicians because they need to hear yeah. whatever it is we talk about as a security body if they are not there to implement what we want when it comes to security and i think we're just talking to ourselves at the time so we're bringing in corporate bodies we're bringing in private security organizations all put together for us to have a discussion on the way forward when it comes to the issue of security going on in Nigeria. And like I say, or we say on my program, security is a collective responsibility. It's not just for one person. We'll also have members of, the, of our immediate environment and of course the ones from far and near. Security entails the community, the media, the security personnel. We can't do anything outside of these people. So it's a whole lot. We have uh, panel sessions coming up. We have different speakers that will be coming up. Our, chief, our chairman of the day is the former governor of the state, that's Gunnar uh, Olshego Oshoba. Mm. He will be coming. And we also have different, different. Uh, the army will be represented, the police will be represented, and SDC will be represented. You name it. You are bringing in powerful security personnel in Nigeria for us to have this conference and find a lasting solution to this, we, we were a country that never had this issue of insecurity, but now it's like it's becoming a day-to-day -day thing, and some people are still just getting used to it. Oh, you hear 20 people have been killed here. All right, so we'll move forward. On to the next thing. So far, it's not connected to me. So it's, it's going to be powerful, and that's what we're coming on to screen to let us, to let people know that we're coming up with so much on 21st of September. At our venue, it's a civic center here in Lagos. And it's free to attend, actually. It's open to everyone. You want to be in attendance, it's open to everyone. We will be seeing the people you want to ask questions, the questions you have. Bring it all up, because discussion will be about security. That was glad. All we'll right. Thank you, Temidayo. And you just heard from Temidayo Anthony and Uki. Oh, Samson. Come on, President Chief, in just something yeah. about okay. it. Okay. 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 okay, well, just to... She has said uh, much about it, but um, let me just add... Um, 
uh, before that. Um, the team for this year is we, we intentionally have that uh, team just to talk about intelligence because we felt like the major challenge. Look at the um, people asked and coming back to some of your question, uh, people asked like the um, the train attack in Abuja Kaduna Road, the uh, Kujie prison break, and some other things. Mm. They are asking the police, they are asking the military, that are you don't you have intelligence on this each issue or something likely is going to happen before this one business come up, me or the lights. So that's why we say that um, there's a need for us to talk about this topic. And then another thing is we need to say this: um, if that certain individuals have information, especially like we say community, because community. all these things are always local. Yeah. All these things are local. It's not. Um, it's always a community, mm. you know, comes up in one community or another. So they are local base, and these community personnel or so resident have this information. In fact, they know a stranger in that environment coming, but sometimes they tend to just hold back. Hold back. Mm. They tend to not say something. Oh, if I say hold down, I will not be attacked. Or sometimes past experiences, maybe with security agencies, going to a police station or going to a town and maybe um. Uh, and if you find that the person finds that oh, the information is leaked out that I was one that said it because I, I came to the police station, I came to that security personnel to just give him that because he or she is mount without saddle without responding to you know I do have the weapon, I do have the authority. My yeah. uniform does not give me authority That's to arrest somebody. You know, so, so when I, you started with say something, say something. Yeah. Now I saw this something, but I need to go somewhere to it's say it. Something. I have to go to a, a, a police station to report. Not on social media, not on this. But the point is, past experience of repressor attack or get uh, the um, the whatever mastermind of those uh, attack them um, of those uh, plans, you know, get to know that oh, this formation was leaked out by social resident or by by social landlord by social um, house. And so finally, they just come. get some form of yes yes the so they they, they, they they see that oh they are being attacked so once you have that experience of uh, that neighbor that is being attacked because so next time you as a neighbor be you want to keep quiet say ah this thing i saw it so let me just keep quiet let me not say it so that my family not be attacked let me protect my family let me just be quiet okay. so but that information you have kept might have caused a harm to that like the community all right so what we need here thank you okay, for yes. that uh <laughs> and uh samson okay and you've heard all that from Temidayo Anthony and Uki Samson, the representatives of the body that regulates, uh, you know, sanity on the online media space when it comes to uh, journalism and broadcasting. All right. So if you want to hook up with them and know more about how you can be active and active, uh, uh, you can be part, fully partisan in you know security issues in your neighborhood your community the country at large do you thank you once again thank for you so much. being on morning day thank and you. i hope you have a great time today and in the future yeah? sure. thanks so much all right and we look thank forward to seeing uh super screen and Definitely. possibly jennifer too <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. i know you're always busy this year yeah. all right okay all thank right you so okay thank you for watching this